Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Troubleshooting Windows Operating System Part 1. Today we're going to talk about common symptoms of problems with the Windows Operating System, what causes those symptoms, and some tools that you can use to resolve those problems. And with that, let's begin this session. So we need to begin by talking about the Windows operating system. It's composed of tens of millions of lines of code. That's a lot of complexity, and there's a lot that can go wrong. Because of this, it's important that you follow a troubleshooting methodology to reduce your wasted time and to reduce your effort level. So the first symptom that we're going to talk about is the BSOD, the blue screen of death. The symptom is, is that a critical stop brings up the BSOD. There are many things that can cause the blue screen of death to show up. The nice thing is, is that it usually provides a hex code at the bottom that you can use to research what the problem is. Tools that you can use to help resolve this are disable automatic restart on system failure, that way you can get the code, and then Microsoft's knowledge base to research the code. Failure to boot. The symptom is, is that the system will not boot up, and you may or may not get an error. Many things can cause this. There are hardware and software errors. Viruses can do this, or it can just be a glitch. The tools that you can use to resolve this include just doing a simple restart, especially if it was just a glitch. Uh, Microsoft's knowledge base. You can use last known good configuration from the advanced boot options menu or startup repair from the same menu, or safe mode from the same menu. If you do safe mode, you can run antivirus and system restore from there. You can verify system files with the system file checker scan now option. Fix boot and fix MBR can be used to fix boot sector issues. And as a last resort, you can restore from a system image. Now let's talk about improper shutdown. The symptom is, is that the PC shut down with no warning once, but can reboot with no problem. The cause is more than likely just a, just a glitch or a momentary power issue, or your end user just doesn't understand the importance of proper shutdown. Your tools, well, if it's a glitch, there are none. And if it's the end user, well, end user education usually solves that problem. Now there are other shutdown issues like spontaneous shutdown or restart. And the symptoms are kind of the same as the improper shutdown, but it keeps happening and it isn't the end user. Causes can include malware, faulty RAM, and a failing power supply. The tools that you can use to troubleshoot this are antivirus software, system file checker with the scan now option, and the Windows memory diagnostic tool. If none of those do it, then you might want to follow the procedures for troubleshooting a power supply. Now let's talk about if your RAID is not detected during installation. Well, your symptoms are you've just installed a RAID array, and it's not initializing on boot up, and it's not available for you to use. The cause is usually a hardware-based RAID with an incorrect driver. The tool used to troubleshoot and fix this problem is the device manager and the process to check and update drivers. Or you can check with the RAID hardware manufacturer's website. Now, if a device fails to start, and the cause for that is usually a bad or incorrect driver, the tool to use is Device Manager, and the process is to check and update the driver. Every once in a while, you'll get a missing DLL message, and the symptom here is that an application fails to load or function and it gives you missing DLL message. The cause is that the required dynamic link library file, which is reusable code, is either missing or corrupt. Your tools to troubleshoot and recover from this include system file checker with the scan now option. A lot of times that'll reload the proper DLL file. In some cases, it may be necessary to register your DLL file. And to do that, you use the regserve32 command. Whatever you do, do not download third-party DLLs from the internet. That's a common way to actually download and install malware on your machine. 
Another symptom that we need to discuss is when services fail to start. The symptoms are that some function is affected because the service hasn't started. There are several things that can cause this. The leading cause is that the service that is needed has been set to disable. You can check the system log in the event viewer to, to see if you can get any hints as to why the service failed to start. Or you can use the service applet. This can also give you in insight on the service's behavior. Has it been set to run automatically or is it in the disabled state? Every once in a while, you'll get a compatibility error. The symptoms for this are that the application either doesn't start or it fails to run properly. The cause is that the application is legacy. It's older. It's not that compatible with a newer OS. The tools to fix this include the application log in the event viewer to see if an error message has been logged. A lot of the times this will be there and it'll tell you that there's a compatibility issue. The usual fix is to run the application in compatibility mode so the operating system mimics an older or prior operating system. A symptom that also commonly occurs is slow system performance. The system is running slower than normal. Causes include too many applications running, not enough memory, or possibly a process or application issue or malware. All of those can consume your CPU and operating system time. Tools to troubleshoot and resolve this include the task manager. Check to see what applications and processes are overly consuming CPU resources. You can also stop the process or lower its priority from here. Now that concludes this session on troubleshooting the Windows operating system part one. We talked about some symptoms, some causes, and tools. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and we'll do another one real soon.